Talib Kweli, welcome back to Vlad TV. I'm here, man. What's going on? You one of our OG guests. I think we go back like 2009 or so. We go back to like when you was making like Tupac mixtapes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So cool, man. So congratulations on everything. I see you out there grinding, doing your thing. Um, yeah, man. I, I'm a hard worker. It's in my blood. Yeah. Yeah, man. And you know, this is something I've never really told you before, but uh, Respiration by, you know, your group Reflection Eternal is actually one of my favorite hip hop songs. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Resp Respiration is a, it's a good one. It's a good in. Um, it's actually Black Star, but it's, it's actually... Oh, sorry. Sorry. My bad. Black no, Star. but, but High Tech produced it. Um, and it there was something go. that was, um, you know, it was definitely considered for the Reflection album, but it was a Black Star record. It's one of my most important records, definitely. Yeah, I mean, like the whole thing about the, the city breathing and everything. I remember when I first moved to Manhattan and I sat in my high rise and I'm like, I could feel the city breathing. And then like those words were kind of echoing through my head, you know, so it was kind of an important song to me. Yeah, it's an important song for us, too. You know, Common was my favorite MC. Um, I had to hunt him down to get a verse from him on that record. Um, you know, it was it was an important record. I remember we we filmed that video on what was the coldest day of that year. You know what I'm saying? Common in the video got on a fur. He got on a green fur, but the video was black and white, so no one got to see that he was stunting with the green fur. Yeah, man. That's what's up. So, you know, in the news, we just reported that, that Most Def, a.k.a. Uh, Yasin Bey, uh, was allowed to leave South Africa. You heard about this? Yeah, he's been, um, I don't know uh, if that news is quite as accurate as, as it seems. He's been allowed to leave and travel um, for a while now, but there was an issue. There was a passport issue. But I think the news is now the, the issue, whatever the issue was, got solved officially, even though he has been traveling to other places in Africa. You know, he's been doing things in Tanzania and other places. Okay. Any chance of another Black Star album? Um, you know, Black Star is what it is. Black Star is a group that when you look at the Black Star album, it says Most Def and Tyler Kweli are Black Star. It's an organic thing, it's a live experience. That's my brother, you know, um, I was out there in South Africa kicking it with him. Um, I, you know, as far as another record, I don't know. It's gotta be an organic thing. Okay, I mean, is he really like rapping still? Um, he dropped the single with my man Narcy, shout out to the Narcissist from uh, Montreal. Um, they did a single, Tribe called, called Red, in the summer, they did a fire ass video for it. I just heard it on some co commercial too. So, you know, I'm like, y'all seen me in South Africa dropping random singles on the internet and they still get picked up for commercials because that's how ill he is. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what commercial was for, but um, but yeah, I mean, he's made statements that he's retiring, but I, you know, I know my brother, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, maybe he's retiring from a certain aspect of the music industry and business, but he's going to be making great music forever. Whether or not we get to hear it is another story, but he's going to be making great music forever. Yeah, I mean, I remember when he first dropped, um, I forgot the name of the song, but it's like A, B, Boys Rock the World, CDs and tapes. Generate, you know, generate tapes. tapes. E, F, e, F is the last part of death. Like, you yeah, were just yeah. killing it. Yeah, that's um, that's on Universal Magnetic, man. Universal Magnetic, right. produced by Sean J. Period. Um, you know what I'm saying? The B side is If You Could Hear, You Could Hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's around the time that Black Star was beginning. I had Fortify Live, which featuring most death on it, and 2000 Seasons. and because I would, we had records with each other. So when I had to perform at like Wetlands or Tramps, I call Most Def. He had to perform at SOBs or you know what I'm saying. Like he would call me, and we would always be at each other's shows. So that was the the genesis of Black Star. Yeah, man, definitely a very dope project. Hopefully, I'll get to hear you guys together at some point in the future. All right. So speaking of albums, um, you're on the new Tribe album. Yeah, I'm on the Tribe Core Quest album. Which is the number one album in the country. That's right. Shout out to Q-Tip and Jerobi and Ali and rest in peace. Fife Dog, shout out to Busta Rhymes and Consequence and everybody who came together to make the Tribe album a beautiful piece of work. Uh, Andre 3000. Yeah, Kendrick Lamar. Uh, Kendrick Lamar. Anderson uh, Pack. Yeah, Jack White. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a beautiful situation. J Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, because they was around for a lot of it. We was in the studio kicking it. Um, and they was very in in inspirational to the process, I think. Um, which is what, what led to the SNL situation. Um, you know, it's just, it was, you know, I actually went over Q-Tip Crib. I was at Q-Tip Crib last night um, working on music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went over his crib to work on a record for my new album that we had been working on for years. And um, when I got there, he was, him and Jerobi was working on that tribe. They was working on the album. So 
I was like, fuck my song. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, I sat in the corner and I just was a student. I was, I was grasshopper. You know what I'm saying? Like just on the wall, just watching the process. And then, you know, by the grace of God, I was asked to be on the K Killing Season record. Um, shout out to Jerobi once again, um, cause he specifically, he told me that he had written his verse for that when he had watched me on CNN with Don Lemon. And um, it was like just divine divinity that I ended up on the record with him when, when that's where he got the inspiration for the verse. Yeah, I mean, if you look at like a lot of, a certain type of East Coast music, it really, I feel, comes from like tribe in terms of like the root and like the whole family tree. In the same way that right. you look at like Dr. Dre on the West Coast, right. and you look at like the Kendricks and the games. I mean, but it's not just else. East Coast music. I mean, Tribe Called Quest has made not just some of the best hip hop music of all time, but some of the best music of all time. Some of the things Q-Tip and them has, have done have just been revolutionary with the music. And when you see his impact, like, you know, when you when you see that, you know, whether it's producers, there's, there's producers that I work with, like Dave West, 88 Keys, that got, they start from working with Q-Tip. Like, that sound, that's that's perfect. If you were to encapsulate hip hop and put it in a time capsule and aliens would come down, you're like, what's, what's brilliant hip hop sound like? You're gonna play them a Tribe Called Quest record. You know what I'm saying? Like, Q-Tip introduced us to Jay Dilla. Jay Dilla arguably might have mastered the Tribe Called Quest sound better than anybody. But that sound you talk about, like we, def what we, what we, our upper echelon of hip hop, our standard of hip hop, Jay Dilla's the standard bearer. That's why even before he passed away, he was hailed as one of the greats because he was creating hip hop that was so gorgeous. It would just bring tears to the eyes. It's like, it's a type of hip hop that you can't front on. Nobody can front on it if you have a soul. You know what I'm saying? If you've ever been in love, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is music you cannot front on. And you're right, Q-Tip is the father of that. We all his sons. When, when, when Pharrell, Pharrell says that in the documentary, he says, we are his sons. Kanye West, Q-Tip's son. Black Star, we, are, we, are, we, are, we come from this, man. Like, I had these dudes' posters on my wall. If you look at my Instagram right now, there's a picture of me, 15 years old. I'm in the building nightclub. I'm with Jerobi, and I'm with Ali. I was 15 years old. I took pictures with everybody in the club. I Tropical Quest is so much a part of my psyche. I forgot until I was at Tip's house working on an album that Jerobi was the one who got me in the club that night. And Jerobi remembered, and we wasn't friends, and I wasn't a rapper. I was just some 15 year old kid. He was like, I remember I got you in that club. You know what I'm saying? So it was like Tropical Quest, like on an abstract level, no pun intended. You know what I'm saying? Abstract MC, but in the abstract. And in a very literal, visceral, real, in the flesh sense, Tribe Called Quest has been integral to my career. My first Lyricist Lounge performance in SOBs, when I brought high tech beats that I got my name buzzing in the streets of New York, is because Q-Tip hosted that. Danny and Anthony, Q-Tip was hosting, Rod Digger perform, Problems perform, Young Z perform. Um, and I got off stage and Q-Tip was like, yo, you nice. And that's when I knew that I really had a shot at making music for a living. Yeah, I mean, what was really the reason for dropping this album? Was it because Fife passed away, or was there sort of a, another reason um, behind it? Well, it's no mystery that Tribe Called Quest ended not just because they felt that they ran their course, but because there was internal drama in the group. And it took a minute, it took a number of years for Tip and Fife to get back together and get that brotherly bond. Cause they grew up together. You know, Jonathan and Malik, from the time they were little, they grew up together. They bond needed, needed repair. And I think this album was the cherry on top of the cake that was the, rep, the repair of their bond. Like they had, they had bonded and they were back together as brothers. So they made a decision to record an album. Um, they went on, I think they went on the Tonight Show last November. And I think around the time they went on the Tonight Show, they uh, Fife started flying to Q-Tip's house because he got this great studio at the crib and recording verses. And that became the genesis for this album. So these verses that you hear that Fife got are, are new verses from the last year or so. No one knew that Fife was gonna uh, leave and join the ancestors this soon. You, you know, if you got somebody that you love, um, tell them you love them today, hug them. Call them, you know what I'm saying? Because you never know when they could be taken away from you. And everybody knew that Fife had, you know, health issues. But 
he had been he had overcome a lot of them over the years and um you know I, it's there's people who are I'm not religious but we need each other to survive you talk you when you talk to when you talk to prisoners who have been in solitary confinement the thing that's inhumane about solitary confinement is lack of interaction, a lack of touch with other human beings. That touch, that interaction that we need to survive, the fact that we need love in our lives to, 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 for the human spirit to feel energized, the fact that we take in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide and the trees take the carbon dioxide and turn it into oxygen, which we then breathe in. This is a cycle of life. This is this is this is all like everything that is together. Everything that's all that's that's what God is. People try people don't know what to call that, so they call it God and they give it human traits. You know what I'm saying? And and they're trying to come up with an explanation for the unknown. But there's things that you see in life that prove that there's something above us, whether it be a great piece of art, whether you hear a symphony or a great piece of music or a great Q-tip or Jay Dillaby. When you think about the fact that their relationship was repaired and then they started working on this album together and right when they got enough material to really create an album, Fife was taken away from us, that to me is God. You know, that's God's plan. And um, it seems sad and tragic, but we also have to celebrate the plan, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is how it's supposed to be. Like, Fife has given us so much. He's not, He's. he's he might be, his body might have, have left and the body might not be working but his spirit what he what what fife dog is and and tropical quest has given to the world is is indelible it'll go nowhere um he'll be alive forever yeah and it was a great album you know, and it's really... a great fucking piece of work like the shit is just phenomenal and 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 i got to be on it man and that's like a dream come true and that's that's that shows you that's also god too that also shows you that you can speak truth to power like i I visualized this when I was 13, 14 years old. I used to sit in my room listening to Tropical Quest music over and over again with posters of Tropical Quest all around me, and here I am on their final album, bro. Like, that's, man, that, that's, that's speaking truth to power in a very real way. Yeah, and it really sounded, um, it, so it sounded very natural in terms of, of you being on there. Like, I never really thought about it before, but once I heard you on that record, it was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, if if Talib was a different age, he could have been a, a native tongue back in the day and right. so forth. 